Hi everyone, welcome back to the US CPA classes for business analysis and reporting examination. So in this particular class of state and local governmental accounting, I'll be walking you through in detail about the typical item and specific type of transaction and the event measurement that include the calculation and presentation of government entity financial statement that is your net position and the component so we have lot to cover in this particular video so stay tuned to understand more in detail the financial statement so there are eight things which we will be studying so some part of it we will cover today and some part of it we may cover on coming saturday to finish off this chapter so this is last topic in the governmental accounting First, we will be studying is about net position and components. So, overall net position, which is kind of balance sheet. And in that, we need to give a discrete information of components. So, we will understand about the component side of it. Second is fund balances and component. So, one is your government-wide financial statement. And second is your fund financial statement. In the fund financial statement also, there would be certain fund balances and the component balances, right? Then you need to do the reconciliation of both. Third, we will be studying the capital assets and infrastructure assets. So capital assets, we all know property, plant and equipment. Infrastructure is assets are those assets, which is like commercial building, dams, bridge, railway road, right? Or uh, maybe like airport, such kind of uh, infrastructure development, which the government do. That all comes under the infrastructural assets. Then fourth, we'll be understanding the journal and proprietary long-term liability. So journal and proprietary long-term liability, which may include the loans you have taken or the proprietary fund you have been allocated for the respective business. Fifth, we'll be understanding interfund activity, including transfer, here, we also understand the elimination between the two different government entities. So why we separately identify the related party transaction so that at year end, it will be easy for us to identify the overall related party transaction, right? Then sixth, we'll be understanding the non-exchange revenue or transaction. So there might be certain revenue, which is which does not include any exchange of product or services between one department to another department, but there would be an adjustment to it. So for example, like uh, if there is department X of the government activity, they have particular inventory, which is being required for uh, B, another company, which is under the same governance, then this one unit or couple of unit of inventory, which may be raw material for X kind of be a finished good for Y, or it can be like raw material for Y, and then it, they can convert it into a finished good, right? So in that case of scenario, what will be the adjustment entry you need to make when you are transferring inventory from one business unit to another business unit or one governmental unit to another governmental unit which will come under the same primary government right whatever the intercompany or intergroup transfer we were dis we are discussing is majorly on account of the entity which fall under the same group or the same government then after seventh is expenditure ex expenses which is very simple and the last one is budgetary accounting and encumbrance so budgetary accounting is majorly budget versus actual analysis or the disclosure required in the required supplementary information for budget versus actual and year over year for at least last five years, the details or the statistics of that particular fund, right? And an encumbrance is the amount given as a loan or something like that, right? So we'll be discussing all these eight points so we are starting with the very first point, which is net position and component, right? So we are at 
typical item and specific item of transaction and event which include measurement valuation calculation and presentation of the governmental entities financial statement so the very first point is net position and component what is net position what is considered as a net position I mean, item balance sheet only yeah so net net of all assets and liability generally is considered as net position right so government wide financial statement typically classify net position into three category same way like in the normal financial statement of any company whatever you call it equity right here it is called it net position same way not for profit organization which we studied in couple of classes back there also we have this term called net position right they do not call it the money as equity but at the same time that's an ngo which is an you can say independent or private ngo they are still the trustee and the management are the decision maker and they will do the respect they will take the respective decision but here for the governmental accounting the government department representative will be considered in the key position for taking up the decision and even though they have like internal you can say board of director board of advisor who provide the advice in taking up the decision and board of director who approve the key decisions of the organization right so the net position and component for the government wide financial statement typically classify as net position into three category what are those three category the first one is net investment in capital asset second one is restricted net position and third one is unrestricted net position right so first we are understanding what is net investment in capital asset then we will understand what is restricted net position and what is unrestricted net position right so first one is net investment in capital asset it means the amount you have invested in building the capital asset is called net investment in capital asset that include your capital assets which is fixed uh fixed assets or you can say property plant and equipment minus if there is any accumulated loss or the capital assets related to deferred inflow of resources so those all things comes under the asset side right the outstanding balance of the bond mortgage interest note or other borrowings right to the acquisition and construction or the improvement of capital asset as the capital asset related to the deferred inflow of resources right any doubt what is what is net investment in capital asset so far so good yes sir hmm yes sir. unexpected yes you are saying something no sir i was saying no doubt clear hmm. so unexpected debt proceeds used for capital assets construction are excluded from a portion of capital debt and included in the restricted net cash position of the component to offset those two unexpended proceeds so if there is any cash which you have in your hand right so that first you will be utilizing for the respective unrestricted fund and then uh sorry for first you will be consider that for the restricted fund if there is remaining balance that will go to the unrestricted fund which you can utilize right what is restricted net position let's understand and what is unrestricted net position let's understand that so restricted net position as the name suggest right there are certain restriction on that particular asset which cannot be used for any other purpose or for the general purpose right first point if you see is the reported net restricted net position is reported when constraint on the net asset use are narrow than the general limit of the activity what is constraint any idea i think like some of you have studied esc 606 revenue recognition with me right so i'm i'm hopeful like you understood what is constraint mean 
yes yes any idea what is constraint mean or maybe if you can just do the google hmm? just do a quick google and get back to me padha hua hai but yaad nahi aa raha tumse yeah you have studied in ss 606 step 2 identification of performance obligation performance obligation and then in step 3 identification of transaction price acha that is what is called constant सर कंस्ट्रेंट uh, मतलब एसी 606 में तो ये था कि रेवेन्यू उतना ही लिमिट वी वुड लिमिट द रेवेन्यू टू द अमाउंट दैट इज हाईली प्रोबेबल ऑफ नॉट बीइंग रिवर्स्ड ऐसा कुछ सर परफॉर्मेंस ऑब्लिगेशन जितनी सेटिस्फाई होगी हम उतना ही रेवेन्यू रिकॉग्नाइज करेंगे वही कंस्ट्रेंट हम्म Have you heard the concept variable consideration there? Yes, sir. And we discuss along with variable consideration, constraint to variable consideration. Okay. Constraint to variable consideration. Hmm. Shabira, Pranshi, Arun, any idea what is constraint? So constraint, constraint is uh, restriction. Yes. Yeah, constraint mean restriction that does not allow you to utilize that particular money or maybe your negative revenue, right? Which can be your discounts, which can be your rebates, right? Those are called like in ASC six or six, which you have studied is called constraint to the variable consideration. that can be your discounts that can be your trade discount cash discount rebates exemption so those all things being considered as a constraint to revenue like specifically iska matlab ye ho gaya ki currently mm -hmm. we do not know whether uh, we would get that revenue or we won't get that revenue so constraints are variable consideration uh no constraint the variable consideration are basically the limitation that uh, you cannot utilize that particular fund or you can say which have negative impact on the respective fund for example in asc 606 step 3 when we discuss about transaction price transaction price include both fixed price and variable price and the variable price we studied the concept of constraint to variable consideration that means certain item which limit the variable consideration for example uh, you know like your discounts your vouchers your dis, uh, you know like uh, uh, you can say loyalty points payback points reward points those all things comes under the constraint which which reduce your revenue or which restrict your revenue right right okay hmm? so report when constraint on net asset use are narrow than the journal limit of the activity so at that point of time you need to report the respective constraint which are material to the financial statement separately second is constraint can be externally imposed by the creditor guarantor contributor law maker regulators or the constitutional provision right but it can not be generally internally generated except wherever there is a general rule there is an exception to the general rule exception is for here is like unit component unit or maybe in the normal life if you see it can be you know, like uh, uh restricted cash or it can be the fixed deposit in the escrow account so those all being considered as a constraint which you can not utilize for any other purpose on expended proceeds of capital debt and capital assets related to deferral inflow are included in this component 
offset by the equal amount of related capital debt. Second last is restricted net position equal to the restricted assets minus the liability and deferred inflow related to the restricted asset. The last one is if permanent endowment are included, they should be presented into sub classification, which is called non expendable or expendable. And what is unrestricted net position? That is free net position. The amount or the reserve can be utilized for any purpose. Hmm? So represents the portion of net position that does not meet the definition of restriction or net investment in capital asset. And this is calculated as unrestricted financial assets minus the related non-capital debt payable plus the non-capital deferred outflow minus the non-capital deferred inflow. So calculate the unrestricted financial assets. I would say, let's do this. Minus. Related non-capital debt payable. Then after I would say it's plus non-capital deferred outflow. Right. Then you have minus non-capital deferred inflow. So it may be easy to understand. Right. Does it make easy to understand? Sir, this means you have a formula. You have written mm -hmm. unrestricted financial assets mm -hmm. minus related non-capital debt payable. Mm -hmm. Non-capital debt means working capital. Working capital mm -hmm. Yeah. So, unrestricted position, we have already unrestricted financial assets. Mein se, uh, non-capital debt payable or non-capital deferred outflows Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So remaining balance will be which you can use for any purpose freely. Sir, we base liya, start kara. Let's say your unrestricted financial asset. Let's say you have cash in hand of one million dollar, right? That is your unrestricted financial asset. Then you have related non-capital debt payable. So let's say you have. Hundred thousand dollar as a working capital loan that you will be reducing it. Then you have non capital deferred outflow. Non capital deferred outflow means the current liabilities, right? So, for example, hundred thousand dollars you have current liability that you will be uh, sorry, non capital deferred outflow. Uh, non capital deferred outflow means you will be uh, capital deferred flow. Plus, sir, sale of goods ke upar jo deferral ho revenue. Yeah, ka. yeah, yeah. So you'll be recognizing the revenue later on. So that you'll be adding mm -hmm. minus the non-capital deferred inflow. That is your current liability. You'll be minusing. So it will give you the net position. Sir, ye... let, let me explain by in Excel sheet. All right. Deferred outflow to less ni hona chahiye tha. One second. So here, if you remember, this is like the type of financial statement it goes and finally it comes to the net position. Right in net position, they are saying, how do you calculate this unrestricted net asset? Right, this unrestricted net asset is basically will be coming from, let's say your Unrestricted financial asset if you have one million dollar, right? And then you have uh, this related non capital debt payable, right? So that is your kind of working capital WC. Right, so WC loan generally do not have any restriction. So let's say you have hundred thousand dollar of the WC loan, right? And then after you have non capital deferred outflow, that is your receivable, right? You have trade receivable, trade receivable, correct? 
right? Then let's assume you have fifty thousand dollar, right? Then you have trade payable. These all are free flow and it's impact directly to your unrestricted cash. Let's say you have one fifty thousand, right? So what is your unrestricted net asset? So this is your unrestricted net asset. Yes, sir. So this is what I was telling. Sir, ये जो financial assets आपने लिखे हैं ऊपर ten lakhs, ठीक है? One million. तो ये तो your cash in hand, which is like unrestricted amount. It can be your marketable security. It can be your cash in hand, or it can be your uh, you can say inventory. So both. What is financial assets? Financial assets are like your inventory, your receivable, your cash in hand, your marketable securities, right? ठीक है तो उसमें से basically जो deferrals हैं और जो receivable in future हैं वो minus plus कर दी Yes 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 Sir एक बार उस पे ना Sir word में हमने यहाँ पे लिख रखा है minus related non capital debt payable Plus hmm. non capital deferred outflows. Hmm. ये inflows नहीं होना चाहिए. Uh, plus you are saying non capital deferred outflow. Uh, 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 what we can do? Trade receivable ले रहे थे हम जो plus कर रहे थे. Like prepaid item deferred charges. So these are examples. Like where you have already paid, but you are spent uh, considering for expenses purpose in future. So non capital deferred okay. outflow is you can say like prepaid. तो तो हम ये बोल रहे हैं कि हम उसको पहले ही we have already paid for it, so we are adding it hmm. to our already unrestricted cash. So it's rate. like your financial asset. Hmm. In a way, it's like your financial asset. Hmm. And this is your This is your, uh, you can say, financial liability, hmm. right? एक बार सर एक्सेल दिखाओगे लास्ट टाइम। हम्म सर ये छोटा सा स्क्रीनशॉट वहीं पे लगा दो उस टेबल में। ये तो बाद में ना कंफ्यूजन होती रहेगी। राइट यस सर Hmm. Right. So I think this may be helpful. Right. 
right so we understood all the three concept of net position net investment in capital asset restricted or unrestricted right so all these three items which is part of your net position right any doubt so far no, sir. Okay. Reporting for lend security, that means if you have given anything on lending and reporting of security lending transaction. Security lending transaction is a collateralization by letter of credit or security that the government entity cannot pledge or sell unless the borrower default should not be reported as asset or liability in the balance sheet and cost of such lending transaction include borrower rebates agent fee should be reported as expenditure or expense in the operating statement and should not be netted off against the interest income so <coughs> if one government department is lending money to another department right and if there is any security so that amount if it is for the same government, it will get eliminated as an intercompany or interfund transfer. But if it is from one government to another government, for example, Haryana government to Delhi government, right? In that case of scenario, you need to report it and you will be specifically reporting what is the security over there, interest over there, and the expenses considered for the same amount, right? Normally, how we disclose borrowings basically, nothing special. So, one more quick question here. A city council designate fund in the enterprise fund for future equipment replacement. The enterprise should report this fund where? What is the call of the question? The city council designated fund in the enterprise fund for future equipment replacement. The enterprise fund should be reported this as Net investment in capital asset, unrestricted component of net position, designated component of net position, or restricted component. Where do you disclose? So, for example, if you have to disclose in any of these three items, basically, right? Where will you disclose? Hmm? Yes component of net position is it restricted unrestricted or net investment the enterprise fund should report where Sir, एक बार वो ऊपर अभी हमने पढ़ा था रिस्ट्रिक्टेड कंपोनेंट में था क्या लिखा था मतलब याद नहीं आ रहा पुट इट व्हेन कंस्ट्रेंट्स ऑन नेट एसेट्स इन नरवर्स इन द जोन हां तो सर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड तो नहीं होगा कि कोई हमें तो क्रेडिटर ग्रांटर कंट्रीब्यूटर लॉ रेगुलेटरी और कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन में तो रिस्ट्रिक्ट करा नहीं है कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट होगी सर ये होगा मेरे हिसाब से one hmm how about others this is unrestricted component of net position so unrestricted kyu hmm let me see the city council designate fund in the enterprise fund for future equipment placement so it is being Internally designated. Right. Externally, कुछ नहीं है अभी तो नहीं ठीक है. Right. Okay.